This meeting is being recorded. Okay, everybody aware it's being recorded? All yes. right. Brian, it's yours. Take it away. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to share a, share a screen here. And, uh, well, Getting ready to share a screen right here. Okay, does the uh, everybody see the uh, screen up? Yes. All right. Uh, do we see the screen up here right now? Uh -oh. Yes, we do. Okay. All right. A few years back, uh, I had done a, uh, a weather satellite, uh, receiving weather satellite presentation uh, at a uh, meeting. And uh, it's probably about, I'm not too sure exactly when it was, I think about four or five years ago. And uh, the satellite system I had set up back then, which I still have set up uh, even right now, uh, was uh, receiving uh, weather satellites that were called LEOs, L-E-O, LEOs, Low Earth Orbit Satellites. Those satellites uh, orbit at, uh, I believe, maybe three, 400 miles above the Earth's surface. And uh, about every 90 minutes and about, uh, no, it takes 90 minutes for one rotate, one uh, orbit of those satellites. And they sort of work their way around, uh, uh, around, uh, you know, going from uh, east to west. Uh, and so you can get about maybe three, uh, recordings a day uh, from those. I mean, I could be a little bit wrong there. But this picture on the right here, and I've got my, the one that I got my cursor uh, running around in, is uh, one taken from one of those uh, low Earth orbit satellites. And um, those, uh, I can uh, get a picture from, you know, our latitude here in, uh, in Western Colorado at about, we're, you know, just under 40 degrees north. Uh, I can get good pictures from anywhere from usually the Canadian border on up to the Northwest Territories up in Canada. Uh, and uh, depending on the conditions and the, uh, and the uh, location of the satellite, uh, can sometimes get pretty good uh, pictures and other times not so great. Um, and then also uh, to the south, we'll go down to about as far as Southern Mexico. And, uh, but this is just a screenshot I've got on here. I actually have it uh, compared to another screenshot of the one I just set up and the one that I will be uh, presenting in this meeting. And, uh, uh, and so uh, this one that we are gonna be doing here in the meeting is of a, uh, uh, it's called GOES. I don't know exactly what GOES stands for, but it's something about geo uh, orbiting uh, Earth satellite or something like that. But uh, it sets up one place in the sky it's just like your satellite TV. You aim your satellite dish right at the satellite and uh, you should have a uh, constant uh, uh, high quality reception. Now this picture that I took here from the, uh, from the, uh, the, the geostationary satellite and this one here that I took with the, uh, with the uh, low earth orbiting station that I have uh, were taken approximately about the same time. They might've been maybe a few, a uh, half hour, a few minutes difference, I don't know. But you'll notice that uh, the cloud patterns the same over the state of Wyoming, going up here to Montana, down here in the southeast corner of New Mexico, you'll also see that there's also a, looks like possibly maybe some low pressure cell. And so you can see the, the same pattern in the clouds of both of them. This low earth orbit satellite, one that I had done in the previous uh, presentation, uh, has a, uh, I use a what's called Lindenblad antenna, which is uh, basically sort of a uh, oh, it's dipole set at an angle, and there's four of them, but uh, they're good for picking up uh, large uh, orbiting satellites overhead. And uh, so that so the antenna goes all the way down directly to a uh, receiver that I have, and uh, the receiver is uh, set for 137 megahertz and point something, something, something. They've got about five different frequencies that NOAA uses for that. Um, and um, 
And then that just goes from another, from the receiver, it goes to an interface cable that goes into the sound card on another old computer that I have uh, running Windows 2000 uh, that I leave on 24 seven. And so that's just sort of a summary of that, uh, of the uh, other uh, presentation I did for the low earth orbiting satellites. But this new one that I just set up right now, it'll get the whole disc. I'll be showing you some more pictures here as we uh, progress along here. This, uh, this one uh, uses a satellite dish antenna along with, and I'll be, again, I'll be showing you pictures of this and going into a little more detail. But uh, this one um, uh, uses the uh, dish going to a uh, LNA or low noise amplifier, which then goes into a, uh, goes through a, uh, in my case, I've got about uh, 10 meters or 33 feet of uh, low loss coax. And it comes to a, uh, SDR, tiny little SDR receiver and made by Nuilec. And uh, then that goes to a, uh, I've got that into a uh, USB uh, extension uh, data cable, not just a charging cable, but a data cable, which goes to a Raspberry Pi. And then that Raspberry Pi is VNC into another computer. I wanted to do it into this one here for the presentation, but I wasn't able to get uh, the VNC uh, and get it installed on this uh, computer I'm using for the presentation. But uh, so, um, but uh, a little bit of the uh, interface uh, on the screen there. Uh, this one screenshot here was one done through the v VNC on the other computer. And so it's got the Raspberry Pi logo and it's got, um, we've got to have a couple other windows open. And so we'll probably explain a little bit more of that here uh, pretty soon. Uh, right now, do are there any questions or any uh, any information that people are interested in hearing? Uh, if you could, if you could just uh, raise your hand. Okay. If not, okay, I'll just uh, come this, in. This is Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Yes, I was wondering on the low Earth orbit satellite, is your antenna stationary, or do you try? Do you have to track that? Uh, in order to uh, stay locked on long enough to get that image. Um, okay, no, the uh, antenna is just a stationary antenna. There are a few different kinds of antennas that can be used, uh, and but it is also possible. I mean, I even tried it uh, when I first uh, worked at it using a uh, two meter uh, antenna that I had set up on a uh, TV rotator for a satellite uh, contacts. And so I just used uh, that one since that said 144 megahertz versus 137 for the uh, low earth orbit satellite. And I was able to rotate it and it did work. Uh, but uh, again, that's just an extra piece of equipment to have out there and then to receive it automatically uh, for me wasn't feasible because I had no form of uh, automatically rotating uh, the rotator. But it did bring in a very good signal uh, because it was all concentrated towards the satellite. This Lindenblad, and so you may want to look that up on the web. Linden, L-I-N-D-E-N-B-L-I-D. It's basically uh, their dipoles, but they're all set at a certain distance. Uh, oh, it's hard to explain it. Uh, they're they're set at a um, about oh maybe a half wavelength apart from each other, and they're set up at an angle for right for right hand or left hand circular polarization. But uh, there's, they'd be in the form of, say, a square. That's right. And uh, then they're also angled up in one direction. And that would determine the uh, polarization. I hope that helps. Uh, does that help you a little bit there, Mike? Uh, yes. No, that was, that was a good explanation. Thank you. I just didn't know how long it took to capture the image. And if you had to move oh. the antenna, um, yes. capture one I just, full image. So. Yes. OK. Uh, they're usually, uh, when the satellite is in uh, visible at the horizon, it's usually around about 10, 12 minutes, anywhere from 8 to 12 minutes. It varies depending on the orbit and, and the, the, how far the satellite is to the east or to the west or overhead. Overhead would give you the longest uh, uh, time, time to do it there. In my case, I've got the set software set up to receive automatically when it receives a signal. So it starts it, if it's say coming from the north, uh, it'll start to um, 
if you actually have it, if you connect and you, you can watch it, if you've got your, uh, I've got the, I've got that other computer VNC'd into my uh, computer that I'm using, but uh, Brian, you uh, might I can't what, see it. You might tell them what ahead, VNC, yes. VNC is. Oh, VNC, that's actually a, a software that you can have on two computers and you can look at uh, what's going on on the other computer. It's just like putty, using putty or some form of remote control to another computer. So uh, on this, um, so on this low Earth orbit satellite, uh, it starts recording and say a certain, uh, approximately a, a, say a certain time, let's just say at, at I'll just make this up, 10 o'clock. And um, you'll start to see it, uh, it'll start getting lines across the screen. And then as the satellite gets closer, uh, the, it'll continue to the same thing. And, uh, and your best quality of pictures when it's closer to you. But it takes about 10 minutes approximately on the pass, anywhere from eight to 12 minutes, depending on the location of the satellite. And uh, in this case, on my screen here, if you look right through here, and it's very close to our latitude right here, because this, uh, this blue dot right here is uh, our location. But there's a line right across there, and I, I've noticed that's happened on a number of them, and I think it might be from the signal just briefly fading as it gets right on top or something. I'm not too sure. But usually, um, this, this is a very good picture here, but sometimes uh, as you get towards the very north or the very south, you'll see they start uh, losing pixels and it starts becoming a little bit more, what's the word I want to say, blurred or pixelated, I guess. And uh, so again, it takes about 10 minutes approximately, but I've got it set to do it automatically. And uh, so at night or when I'm gone or any of those times like that, it uh, records the uh, pictures from the low earth orbiting uh, satellites there. So, all right, is that uh, answer your question? And uh, are there any more questions, anybody? Brian, I have one, this is Jess. Could yes. Red lines be longitude and latitude lines? Is that possible? No, that's, yeah, that's on the map there. So I believe it is because I've noticed on um, the border here of BC and uh, Alberta, it's right on the, on the lines of uh, that'd be longitude. And I know here we are located 39 degrees north and I believe this red line right here, I'm assuming is possibly 40 degrees north. All right, any more questions? Okay, if not, I'll go ahead and continue. Um, so the type of picture we get, this picture right. here is zoomed in. Oh, Sue has a question. Sue, go ahead. Sue, you have to unmute. Okay. <clears throat> um, are you going to talk about the dish you use on on the new uh, the new way you're copying this, the weather satellite and uh, uh, talk yes, about yes, that's coming up and frequencies. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's uh, coming up. Uh, All right. So almost, okay. All right. So I guess we're ready to continue on here. Any, uh, okay. This next, come on. There we go. This next slide here. This is one that I took uh, or that was taken on my system. Oh, I think of, uh, it would have been about two days ago. This here is, of course, we see the whole earth. And now because we're in winter time, you will notice that it's up in the very high Arctic, it is uh, still dark because, well, it's night up there right now. And uh, right here, this is taken, must have been taken, my guess is probably about mid morning or something like that at our uh, lat, not latitude, our longitude. And so, Western Colorado, we're about in this area here somewhere. That's, yeah, that's Canada. So, probably about this area right through here. On this screen, I cannot zoom it in because I've got a, I, this was actually a, a pic taken, so I can't zoom in on this, otherwise I would. Um, but, um, so what we've got right here is, um, um, okay, so I guess I'm going to the next picture right here. This is a schematic of the system. So 
Uh, these are taken from some instructions for the particular one I got. You can cobble together a system by using an old Wi-Fi or dish or an old satellite dish or something like that. And the schematic right here shows an antenna. Here's an antenna, it's a schematic. Then it shows an amplifier. In this case, it's an LNA uh, amplifier. And this is it right here. Uh, and then this goes through a low loss coax cable down to your SDR, which is, does not, is not seen on here. And here it shows a receiver right here. And then that receiver then goes to, in my case, a Raspberry Pi. And uh, then I just VNC it onto one of these other computers I have. Uh, but you can cobble it together by using a, 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 uh, dong, UN, uh, a, uh, a different type of LNA. This one here is actually specially filtered for about 16, I think it's 16, 1.697 gigahertz, real close to, to that, uh, and to that frequency. There are, right at present, there are two of these satellites, geostationary satellites above North America. There's also a couple of up over, uh, I know there's one over uh, like uh, Africa that uh, shows Africa and Europe, but of course we can't not see that from here. From here we can only access uh, what is known as GOES 16 and GOES 17. GOES 17, and GOES 17 is over probably, I'm guessing maybe close to maybe like being over Hawaii or some area like that. And this GOES 16 is centered uh, more towards the Eastern United States. Brian, let me go back to that previous Brian, picture. Brian, you have a question from Chuck. Go ahead, Chuck. Uh, I was just wondering if you knew uh, what the uh, gain of your uh, dish was. Um, I was just looking off the specs and I've got the specs out here in front of me. It's something like, I'm thinking something like 20, 20 plus DB or something like that. This one, this one particular kit that I got um, I'll go back to this one here, is one that I uh, got off of Amazon. But again, a person can cobble that together. I did try cobbling it together earlier with an old uh, 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 dish that I had and another and uh, some coax and some of that, but I couldn't get things quite right. Oh, I think I know what the mistake was, but in the meantime, I'd already purchased this other kit off Amazon. It's about, it's cost, I think, $179. And uh, I just couldn't go back to it. And uh, it includes uh, the dish, the feed, uh, the uh, LNA, uh, 10 meters of this, uh, I think it's LM, oh, my notes here. It's, uh, I think, 10 meters of this uh, LMR uh, 400 uh, coax. It's really stiff coax, but it's, it's a very low loss. And then it also included a NUILAC SDR. Um, so that's... Uh, more or less we had there. We will, I'll, we'll be going to this here, a little, uh, here in just a minute. Uh, one interesting thing about this picture that I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but uh, you'll notice right here, it seems there's a band of clouds here. It's above, actually it's above the equator because I know the equator is more in Ecuador, so it's down here. But in it's hurricane just season- It's ain't doing nothing. Uh, sorry, well, You're not even on there on the video. Hello, Don, are you there? Yeah. Okay. I'm well, I got a big picture here. I got a whole bunch of little windows over on the side, but I can't hear nothing. Okay. We're going to put you on mute for, can you, can you hear anything, Don? Yeah. Okay. We're going to let Brian go ahead. We're going to put you on mute and just raise your hand if you have a question, okay? Go ahead, Brian. Okay. Uh, during hurricane season, I've seen some other pictures. I've only had this uh, set up here going for about maybe two, two or three months, eh, about two months now. But uh, during hurricane season, which is, uh, I believe, yeah, August, early fall, you will see sometimes see uh, just uh, hurricanes two or three at a time, more or less about from West Africa, which you can see right here, but just south of West Africa, originating in the Atlantic, coming over towards uh, Florida and the East Coast and the Caribbean. And uh, so I'll be interested in seeing that uh, uh, when hurricane season arrives. Um, 
Okay, so going on here to uh, back to the equipment setup. Um, the um, okay, the equipment that you have here can be purchased separately. Uh, you know, a dish can be purchased separately, and a LNA which needs to be compatible uh, with the uh, with the GOES uh, reception, which is up about six one. Let's see, one point six nine seven giga gigahertz. Um, Not video and need. mute on the far left, and then on, on, on the bottom, see all photos and pictures of everybody that's on. Okay. Oh, I don't have a taskbar. It's got my whole my whole screen is blocked out. I wonder if I raised no. Okay. Well. Uh, Don, we're going to take a break and we'll come back and help you in a minute, but Br let Brian go ahead a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Go ahead, Brian. Um, so, um, but um, again, just, uh, I guess, like I was saying, it's probably easier. And even some of the web uh, resources said it's easier just to uh, purchase the whole uh, kit. Uh, like from Amazon or Nuelec, N-O-O-E-L-A-C is actually the uh, manufacturer of this, uh, of this kit. And um, uh, I mean, to me, that was quite a bit easier than cobbling it together. Although I think it would still be fun to cobble it together if I had a little bit more time and whatnot. So, um, but uh, we've got it going into a Raspberry Pi. Let me see what my next picture is here. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, no problem. In order in order to uh, I see the signal, you have got to uh, uh, point the dish correctly. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about that afterwards. But right now, uh, as far as pointing the dish, uh, I, this is on Google Earth here. And I uh, went to dishpointer.com and put in your latitude and longitude. And it put someplace about 10 miles from here on there. But I knew good and well where my house was at here in Rifle. So I was actually able to move this green dot. And I got the very tip of it, actually right over the location in my yard where the antenna's at, so ha ha. But one thing I wanna show in this picture here was there's a line that going directly to where the satellite is. This satellite here is a GO-16 satellite. And so you have to put that in, joy, in dish pointer. Time seven zero three seven nine three four eight eight. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, but we had to put in the name of the satellite right here. Its distance actually is 38,330 kilometers from the Earth or this location, but I put in my latitude and longitude right here. And so it gives a dish elevation. It gives the azimuth, which is the north, south, you know, direct the compass direction. It also gives a magnetic in the declination. Did you and, call um, me? And, um, Underneath it, you can't see it because, well, on my screen anyway, there's a zoom icon on here, but it gives a skew. That's the, the direction the dish is supposed to be angled. But uh, that was, this was probably one of the hardest parts of getting this whole all set up here was uh, getting the dish pointed. So going to the next one, but right here, you'll just see it. There's a little building I noticed, and I'll refer to that in a minute. This next one here, okay, this is closer here to my house. This is my house. I've got an old portable metal building out back. It's a good place to put magnetic antennas on. And, and uh, I also mounted a uh, just an old piece of uh, gas pipe straight up and down. And that's what I've got my antenna set on. And I believe, let's see. Okay, so this is my dish. If you look, you can't, probably can't see it in your picture here, but right here where my, where my uh, cursor is circling, there's that building I saw we, we saw earlier on the uh, Google Maps. And these are just two water tanks, you know, for the city of Rifle. Uh, and you probably saw one on the other map, but that's what we see there. And a couple cell phone towers right through here. But I've got my, this is, I'm probably almost directly behind my antenna. And um, the uh, boom on it is directly over this building. So I use that to uh, align the um, dish. And then after that, I had to uh, run the software and we'll get to that here in a, in a few couple minutes. I had to run that software on a uh, 
on a on my Raspberry Pi, and then um, I had that VNC'd, and it was to a different operating system on this computer, but I was able to VNC it in here. Unfortunately, I don't have a VNC. It's not in the Windows, which I'm using right now. It was in a in a uh, Ubuntu, but I was actually able to get on there and and uh, see what the satellite strength was. And when I first mounted this, I mounted. I had this. It, it's supposed to be skewed. This only can be skewed at, at in 25, wait, 45 degree increments. So it's skewed at 45 degrees to the, to in this direction here. Uh, when I first tried it, I had it skewed Brent, the opposite. Brent, Go ahead, Jesse. Brent, what takeoff, I, I don't know if that's the appropriate way to call it, but what takeoff angle is it for you to get to the satellite? It is what, what, what degree is this pointed to? Okay, um, this, okay, yeah, for, let me go back to our previous picture here, it might say something. If you look down here at the bottom, if you can see where my cursor is, the elevation is at 33.3 .3 degrees. I just used a, a protractor with a uh, little weighted string hanging down on it, but uh, I use that to uh, get the elevation of the dish. In this case, it's 33.3 .3 degrees, and the azimuth, which is our compass direction, which is true true north is uh, 134 degrees, uh, but then we have to subtract from that because we're east, and so our magnetic is says 125 and 0.6 here. And um, so, uh, but in my case, I saw that building there, and so that was a good place for me to aim. I did try using a compass, and um, uh, but then I found the building there, and so I just ended up using that. There's a skew like I was saying earlier, uh, does this help? You? Does this answer your question, Jesse? Okay. Yes, it did. Thank There's you. a skew where, I, uh, where this has to be angled. And it's supposed to be angled also at the negative 33 degrees. The closest was 45 in my case because of this mount right here. I don't have a, I don't have a close up picture of this mount. Uh, but um, anyway, but here you'll see the uh, satellite dish, the feed right here. Here's going to a about 18 inches on the uh, coax cable. And in this box, and I've got a close-up I'm gonna be showing you just now, but I've got my LMA right down here. Uh, let me, I'll go ahead on to the next picture. I think that's what it is. I could, well, no, take that back. This is my Raspberry Pi. Got it in a case. It's a hardwired eth to ethernet. And um, this USB extension data cable, it has to be a data, a da USB data cable. Uh, it's about eight feet long. And so it's going here from the Raspberry Pi on out into my crawl space. Oh, let's go back. Oh, I took off the head like that. Okay, but the, here's the other end of that uh, USB cable. This is going to the new elect SDR right through here. I've got it uh, supported right here, actually, uh, I've got this cable supported right on the uh, joist to the left here. It's out of the picture, but that's a, I believe that's the same joist that my crawl space is on. My crawl space is, you can see my cursor here off to the left on the picture, is about where my crawl space uh, entrance is at. And I've got a board there with a piece of carpet on it and a little cutout for all my coax cables that go outside to uh, my antennas outside. So then here I've got supported here because I don't want any, any, uh, weight on these uh, connectors here. Okay, so that goes outside. Right here, you'll see something right here that you might find, well, sort of interesting, but um, right here. This is an electric fence controller. Got a bunch of extension cord, got that support right there. Here's a wire going outside. And right down here is a wire going into a, uh, to the ground in my crawl space, but it's about four feet deep through here. And there's a reason I've got that. And there's a reason on the left side right here. Well, I've got that electric fencer. Uh, when this, uh, when Brandy here was a pup, uh, she decided to come over and start chewing on these pipes here and uh, on some coaxes that were coming out. And um, she damaged one coax a little bit, but uh, I was able to tape it up and luckily no more damage was done. I was able to repair everything. So no big damage, but uh, I ended up buying a couple of cinder blocks, putting some wires around them, putting, uh, this is like a sewer uh, 
type pipe, you know, that plastic pipe that's slid in. I can, it's full of coaxes right now. And um, uh, so all my radio coaxes are in there, about six or eight coax, RG8 coax cables going through here. The, um, but we've got right here, we've got, uh, I've got some wires. You can see these wires here. There's an insulator up out of the picture here. There's an insulator here, insulator there. And uh, anyway, I put that up and a couple hours later, I was here in the house and I heard an outside. And uh, that's the uh, last time I ever heard that. And so some years finally got it through their, uh, what do you want to say, thick skull that uh, they dare don't touch coaxes or wires or things like that. So anyway. Okay, and here it is from the other side. You'll see here's an insulator here, an insulator there. This is the R, the LMR 400 cable that goes up uh, to the antenna. I've got a uh, insulator up here and a uh, wire coming down here too. Uh, so that so if the dog tries getting close to this, her ears and nose will touch this wire and uh, give her uh, a uh, definitely a you know, don't do this message. Ha ha. So. Um, let's go on to the next one here. Okay, what we've got right here, uh, I made a, uh, used a, got some hardware, used a weatherproof uh, enclosure. I had to cut a hole in the top here. This cable right here is the cable coming down directly from the um, satellite dish. And I put some uh, potting on here or whatever it is, uh, drilled a hole in here and to put the coax through, put some potting on there in order to keep more, uh, water out. There's actually a hole here and a hole down here at the bottom. I put, I, right now I've got duct tape over this here just to keep uh, water out in the winter time. Um, also put some duct tape here. I just got a clear piece of plexiglass. I cut it out and drilled it, screwed it on, made a cutout here uh, for the coax to come out. You can see it's open right here, but that's only about half, oh, three quarters of an inch right there. Um, and then I glued a uh, piece of, scrap plastic for some package, you know, some product or whatever, just right through here, cut it out. It's all to keep uh, moisture and rain just from getting inside here. If some moisture gets in here, it's not going to redo any damage. Right here, uh, and I think I do have a better picture of it. Oh, wait, yeah, uh, actually one more thing here. I include a piece of uh, tin foil here because uh, when it's dark, you there is a white LED light on the uh, LNA. And that's on the side here. But I put that uh, tin foil there so it could reflect off it. I can look outside my bedroom window at night and I can just see a, a little faint uh, white light here. And I, so that lets me know that uh, the um, SDR is on and also the, uh, 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 and it's giving power out to the uh, LNA right through here. Let me go on to the next picture. Okay, here's a better shot of that too. I had to get a couple angle connectors right through here off of eBay and uh, because I had to angle this here uh, to, in order to, uh, I want this facing back towards my uh, room, my bedroom window. So that's why I put these angles in put one in right here too. So here's the coax coming down to the angle connector going into my uh, LNA. Come the springtime, I'm probably gonna have to maybe stuff a little rag or something right through here and maybe some screen or something at the bottom here because otherwise I think, we'll, uh, We'll have yellow jackets trying to uh, to uh, set up resident housekeeping and residence. And uh, so yeah, I can I can happen, guarantee you will get uh, wasps in there. They love yes. satellites for some reason. <laughs> yes, in fact, right down here in this lower left corner, I've got a free to air satellite uh, dish, and they've tried making nests sort of along the bottom there a couple times. Unfortunately, there's not much pro good programming on there, so I hardly ever use it. But uh, anyway. Um, yes, that's uh, correct there. So when spring comes, I'll probably just maybe tape a piece of screen on there or something like that so it won't get super hot inside here. Uh, you oh, probably just jam some steel, thing. just jam some steel wool in those, in those openings and that'll probably take care of it. Oh, yeah, that'd probably work too. Okay. Yeah, I'll possibly try that. Okay, so um, the next thing was a software. Um, and so you can get software either for uh, Windows or you can get it for Linux. Uh, I uh, downloaded it. I found it a tutorial. And uh, in fact, let me just leave this next screen up here. Um, 
this is done with a screenshot. I couldn't, so you can't, uh, so I, I seriously doubt whether you could, eat, could copy these links and bring them up on your computer. But I mean, you can go to rtlsdr.com for go 16 and 17 satellite receptions. Amazon here is where I purchased the uh, antenna and the uh, kit. And this website here, along with the S this website here, we're giving tutorials. And this was the uh, actual uh, software uh, that had the, uh, that I was able to put onto the uh, Raspberry Pi. So first of all, you have to go in and uh, uh, set up your operating system for your uh, Raspberry Pi. I've got a 32 gig card in there and I do have another 64 gig card on there. I like, might like to try to put that on there. Uh, but for another reason I'll tell you about here in a minute. Um, this right here is actually, this website right here is actually the uh, instruction for the uh, antenna and satellite like that. So, but again, if you, if a person chooses to make this, they can try cobbling it together. However, it's a little easier, less time consuming if you do purchase the, uh, the kit off of Amazon and Amazon has not paid me to say this. And so that is not a commercial, ha ha. So but anyway, hey Brian, this software right here. Hey Brian, yes. hey Brian. Uh, I put a bunch of links into the chat for everybody. Uh, basically, Great. I've been doing that as, as you've been going. So I'll keep doing that. Eric, hey, all right. Hey, Eric, thanks, appreciate that. Go ahead. Eric, hold on, Eric, tell people how to get to the chat and to um, your, your messages for those that may not know. So uh, I'm using the desktop app. So if you look at the, if you have the screen up that has all of the participants in it, uh, down at the bottom, you can see there's a little chat button uh, at the bottom where it says like mute and then stop video and then participants chat, share screen. If you click on the chat, that's how you get the chat window up. If you're using a tablet or a phone or something, I can't help you. Okay, thanks, Eric. Uh, okay, we're still recording for those of us uh, just just to make sure. Go ahead, Brian. I'm okay, on the uh, software portion, there's a very good uh, tutorial on uh, both uh, this website here uh, from W6AER and RTLSDR.com as far as installing the software on there. Uh, for one thing, got here in my notes. Uh, but again, like I said, the hardest part here, I believe, was uh, getting the antenna aimed. And uh, so in these other tutorials, uh, it gives some by putting a, an app on your uh, smartphone and aiming it in the direction that you want. Uh, and another is um, uh, putting on another SDR software on and looking for a signal in the 1.697 gigahertz range. There's another way of doing it too. The way I did it, uh, there was a, um, let, I'm going to try something here. I'm going to stop sharing for just a second. I might try sharing another screen. So I'm going to stop sharing for his, my screen here for a second here. Stop sharing. Okay. I'm going to go on to this web. I hope I can, um, I'm already on it here. I'm going to put my s s screen up on that. I need it. Probably hitting the share screen. I'm going to share this one here. I think I might have to zoom here. <coughs> Excuse me, I mean to be coughing in the corner. Hey, Raspberry Pi, ready um, for the uh, software? Updating uh, install this software here, and here's a link for the uh, source code. And uh, here are the uh, other links that you can use to uh, copy and do uh, uh, this uh, one particular piece of software. Just uh, screen and Linux. Brian, Brian, I think facing that. You're yes. Having you're having a, a problem. I think the um, this um, all of a sudden your 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 is um, 
scrambled. So I think uh, I'm not sure, but it's scrambled. So maybe this um, this sharing is too much for the system. Anyway, what do you think? Okay, I'm okay. I'm going to go. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing this screen. And by the way. This, this screen that I just shared, it is one of the uh, ones that are on the links and also the ones that Eric put up. Um, do I sound better now? Okay. Um, but um, when you get the software installed, uh, when you get the, I'll, I'll just bring up, go back and share my other, Windows there. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm not. I'm not going to share that. Um, when you get the software installed, uh, a screen will come up on your Linux computer, and uh, that will have a. Uh, you'll look in there for your. Uh, for. Uh, for your. For the. Two pieces of software. You you will one of them goes for uh, turning on your uh, RTL SDR. Brand your, uh, sure. S, yeah, your SDR. And Brand. then the next one, you Brand. click on that next link in a separate terminal. Go ahead. Um, you, you're not sharing your screen. Are you are you sharing your screen now? Let me try again. Here had a problem just a minute ago. Um, Uh, okay. Oh, oh, I had I had it closed. That's what my problem was. Let me try again here. Entire screen window. Okay, that's. It's going to the wrong picture. Let me try again here. Okay. Uh, does a ghost geostationary satellite receiver web resources? Is that the one showing? Hello? Uh, we're seeing like the instructions for installing it on, um, you know, reinstall the driver, ensure that don dongle secured, et cetera. Okay. That's the wrong one. I don't know how. Oh, I'm trying to share the wrong thing here. Let me go back to this one here. And stop sharing that one. I'm gonna put that one down and uh, go back to and go back to sharing again here. You know, try sharing again. And, uh, um, no. Oh, it's not coming up. That would not be the right screen to look for. Okay, I've got that one up. Oh, something, something seems to be malfunctioning here on this uh, screen. Okay, right now, no. do the ghost uh, geostation satellite receiver web resources, is that page uh, on now? Yep. Okay. Now I lost my train of thought exactly where I was at there. Um, okay. And again, um, there are, you know, if a person wants to try doing this uh, with Windows, they can do it. In fact, they can also, also purchase from some company the software. Uh, for receiving it, and uh, but the software costs one hundred twenty-five dollars uh, for if somebody wants to do something like this, uh, say on a Windows PC, um, or you can do it uh, on a Linux computer, or like what I've done that I've been demonstrating has been on a uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, let's see here. Okay, uh, there is one set of instructions, and I don't have that up here, but uh, it uh, gives some. Um, Parameters on the uh, gain for the satellite for the uh, RTL. 
And um, one of these in these tutorials says that, that uh, you should change your, um, uh, the sample rate on your SDR a little bit lower and uh, change the gain up there. And some things I'm not really going to go into much, uh, but uh, one is, is, is uh, you know, putting in a bias T, if anybody knows what that is. A bias T is actually a way so you can run a long piece of coax out to a satellite dish, and it actually is to power the LNA. This kit that I got from Amazon has got adequate power for the RTL to power up the, uh, the, uh, the LNA in this case. And, um, and so, but if you have, for your QTHs and you have a longer run, you're going to maybe want to put in a separate bias T to add in power there. So you have to be careful that it's one that is not going to run power uh, back into the, uh, that there has to be a, a uh, trap. So, because you don't want power going back from a bias T back into a uh, SDR dongle because it can damage it. Uh, but that again is sort of out of the uh, scope here of this directly on this uh, project right here. But some people might say that. So you had to do a little bit of tweaking with the software there by changing the sample rate because they they had it going coming in at uh, 2.4 million and I put it down to 2 million as a recommendation from one of the other uh, on the one website and that did definitely did help and upping the gain. Um, also, um, there's a couple things want, uh, I do want to do in the uh, future, and that is uh, setting up something that's going to auto start goes whenever I boot up the uh, little Raspberry Pi. Another one is deleting files after so many days on the on the uh, or a person can even set up an external hard drive onto a Raspberry Pi, and you could get thousands and thousands of uh, of uh, those uh, of pictures coming in, but you know, most of us we only we're probably not really too concerned about how the weather was back, you know, a year ago. And so, um, but I've noticed this uh, 32 gig SD SD card that is in the Raspberry Pi tends to fill up after about a week. I have to go through and uh, manually delete those files. It's rather a pain, and you don't put them in the trash can. Yes, you do put them in the trash can, but don't forget to empty the trash can. Otherwise, it does nothing. Um, but uh, I would like, uh, and I think that this software is currently still in development. And from the sounds of uh, reading the other, the websites, it sounds like they're trying to uh, add a few more features. And one of them is to auto delete files after a stipulated number of days on there. Um, another uh, thing that uh, they're wanting to do, might be done now, I don't know but is manage the picks on there. So you can um, line, so a software will line these uh, pick, uh, these uh, picks up. So because uh, you get a new earth image, full image about every half hour. And so it'd be like every half hour, you could make a, a movie and you could just see what the weather was like that day where the clouds were moving, the directions they were moving and so on like that. So that's something else uh, that is going to be done hopefully in the future and other volunteers out there are uh, trying uh, to uh, develop that. So right now, I believe that's most of everything in uh, my presentation. Uh, do we have any more questions? So I do just one comment about the SD card filling up. Uh, there's a utility called Cron, C-R-O-N, uh, that's built into Unix that you could actually uh, uh, automate that process that you can just tell it and it's really it's really hard to figure out but once you do it's like wow this is this is like having a superpower that you can actually go in and say okay anything older than this date just auto delete and just have that run every couple of days or whatever oh okay cron c-r-o-n yep that's right it's built into every unix and linux system so oh okay i'll go ahead and uh Look for that. All right, great. Thanks for the uh, info. All right, any more comments or questions or anything else like that? If not, I guess I'll just go ahead and hand it back to, uh, to uh, I believe, Jess and, uh, or, or Clark. And uh, I think there's another uh, 
portion of our program that's, uh, I guess we're ready to uh, go on to. I just want to say nice job there, uh, Brian. Thank you. Nice job, All Brian. Right. I second it. All right. Thank you very much. And if I can answer any more questions or whatever, I will try to do that. I'll go ahead and stop sharing there. Okay. All right. Nice job. Clock is yours. Thank you, Brian. I unmuted. <laughs> I think I'm unmuted. Let me say, uh, Kevin is next. Uh, uh, there's like three subjects he was going to cover. Uh, repeater system status and projects update, Colorado Council of American Radio Clubs and Rocky Mountain Ham Radio. Okay. Did everybody hear that? Okay, take it away, Kevin. Okay, it's been a while since I've done this. Let's see if I can screw it up. Um, just a second here. Let me launch a uh, program. And let's see here. Dang it. Slideshow from beginning. Okay, everybody see a big white piece of paper there with some letters? Yep. Okay. Uh, I've added a topic at the top here. We're not going to discuss it in great detail, but uh, those of you who are AWRL members have seen a, a, a notice that the Forest Service is wanting to charge additional fees for communication sites, of which we have two of them. There are only 3,700 of these permits nationwide. So there's not that many. Uh, AWRL is encouraging uh, all of their members to file comments. I'm not sure I agree with that. Uh, Bob Cutter, uh, Graham Jackson and I are uh, putting together a response on behalf of the club and we'll leave it at that for now. Uh, repeater system status and projects. As many of you are aware, I've been working on a uh, voting receiver system for quite a while. Uh, it's been kind of in hibernation through the winter. We have gotten all of our networking hardware, uh, with the exception of the antennas. They were on back order from July. Uh, I just received notice uh, yesterday that the antennas have been delivered to the Carbondale Post Office. So I got to go down there with the, uh, the truck uh, next week and pick them all up. Uh, one piece that we can say that is pretty much complete is the Iron Mountain site. Uh, thanks to uh, <clears throat> Bob Cutter, Bob Letke, and Jerry uh, uh, Hittinger, we, we got this site pretty much completed last summer. We did have one piece that was on back order. It seems to be the uh, uh, status of things anymore. It was a little power supply we needed to charge the batteries. And uh, that came in in November, and I finally got that installed. Uh, everything seems to be working fine. However, the uh, 3.4 gig uh, link on sunlight died uh, sometime last fall. Uh, it was at a point you could still drive there, but uh, uh, the roads were icy and snowy, and I just decided I, I didn't, uh, uh, didn't need that uh, uh, sort of aggravation to uh, try and get this stuff working. We're going to be ripping it all out next year anyway. Uh, next topic is uh, CCARC. I'm not really sure why I was asked to talk about this. It's, it's not really a, uh, uh, a uh, interesting uh, topic. We're just a member of a, uh, of a group that administers uh, frequency coordinations for all the repeaters in the state. Uh, Tony, NA0US up in uh, Eastern Colorado and I are the representatives and they have uh, business meetings twice a year by Zoom. Uh, it's a fairly uncontroversial group. Until uh, a couple of years ago, they had, uh, they had a, a group that tried to pretty much take over the, uh, the organization. And uh, it resulted in a rewrite of their bylaws and articles of incorporation to uh, 
uh, give uh, more leverage to uh, genuine clubs with genuine uh, 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 membership uh, rosters. So that's behind us. But, uh, uh, yes, uh, I'm not going to take questions until the thing is over, then we'll go back. Uh, why don't you hold your question? Uh, but what this group does is uh, uh, keep track of all the frequencies of all the repeaters throughout the state, coordinate them so that they don't interfere with each other. There is a shortage of frequencies throughout the state. Uh, you cannot get uh, VHF frequencies anymore anywhere. And UHF frequencies are out of, uh, out of uh, uh, availability in the front range. So it's a valuable commodity, even though we have you know, you know, a lot of megahertz of, of frequencies. Uh, and the group has uh, set up a, a very impressive website to uh, uh, administer and uh, keep track of all the frequencies. These are the ones for our club that are, that are published at least. We have some additional frequencies as well that don't show up here. And uh, this uh, website, uh, it's a very uh, real-time, uh, 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 you know, kind of a, a database type website uh, created by an individual I'll show you later. Uh, but it's a, a very layered, uh, sophisticated website that uh, uh, it would cost a fortune to have it built. and. Uh, there's a lot of detail that goes into keeping track of these frequencies. And uh, uh, Bob Cutter and I are, are the two that kind of administer our, our portion of, uh, of stuff there. Uh, there's just pages and pages of information that goes into these things. And I'll just go through those quickly. Uh, the average user cannot see this information. It is hidden behind uh, a, uh, a login uh, page. But uh, just a tremendous amount of information that uh, 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 to keep track of and, and run into uh, calculations on, on uh, where uh, repeaters are, how high they are, uh, their separation from adjoining frequencies. There's a lot to this. Okay, then the uh, final topic I have here is Rocky Mountain Ham Radio. And they're a uh, kind of a ham radio club on steroids over in Denver. Um, and uh, they, uh, they've been uh, deploying systems across the state and into New Mexico. And uh, just recently, uh, they got a uh, $375,000 grant from, uh, uh, from a, a group in uh, California that administers a, a significant pile of money uh, from some internet uh, addressing stuff that uh, apparently the hams uh, controlled a, uh, a large amount of, uh, of IP addresses that were uh, quite valuable to, uh, to relinquish over time. Uh, I could have maybe Bob Lucky uh, speak further to that. Uh, we also are beneficiaries of this uh, grant organization, although on a much smaller scale, uh, they funded our microwave system replacement. Um, uh, but, um, in November, I had the opportunity to go over to one of their training sessions in Denver. Uh, they hold these about once a month throughout the winter. And, um, uh, the one I went to was on their, on their networking hardware, which is what we will be deploying. And, um, uh, let me shift pages again here. Uh, here's a screenshot of, of the uh, training session that I was at, uh, uh, the two people in the front there, the guy on the right, that's uh, a guy named Willem Schroeder. He's the guy that created the website that you saw earlier. Uh, he's got at least one PhD under his belt. He's, uh, he's a brilliant person when it comes to networking and uh, uh, stuff like that. The other guy in the front there is a guy named John Maxwell, who I've worked with uh, several times. Another very smart uh, network engineering type person. But he's also an RF guy. He really uh, does a lot of their uh, their uh, tower work and uh, uh, microwave uh, deployments and things like that. The guy back there at the camera in the middle, uh, it's a guy named Dave. I can't think of his last name. He's a, he's a WA1. I've worked with him a time or two. He's been very helpful with some of the things I've been working on in the background. Uh, 
kind of the, in the back corner of the room there towards the front, you, you see a couple of guys just hiding behind screens there. Uh, those are their video production people. They, uh, they broadcast these, uh, these sessions live by Zoom. Uh, a lot of their members are, uh, are down in New Mexico and don't always travel to these things. So they can participate uh, uh, live while things are, are occurring. And uh, one other thing to uh, point out in the very back of the room there, back by those uh, closet doors there, you'll see a guy in a blue denim shirt with a receding hairline and glasses. Well, that's proof that I was there. <laughs> okay, uh, they gave every one of us that uh, showed up at the meeting one of these little uh, Wi-Fi routers. Uh, they're, they're like $28 or something like that. They just ordered uh, 50 of them and, uh, and uh, absorbed the cost into their, into their group. And the reason they did this is that even these, these simple little routers like that one have the same uh, operating system in them as their bigger products. Um, like for instance, our, uh, the routers we're deploying at our radio sites uh, has the exact same operating system in it. And uh, something that surprised me, the microwave radios that we are deploying also has that exact same operating system. So if you learn once, learn uh, how to program these little devils here, you learn how to take care of all of our hardware too with, with some significant uh, configuration changes, of course. Uh, and I go, you guys are probably wondering, well, that doesn't really look like a radio. And uh, if you look at the, uh, the bottom pieces there, there's uh, one of them, you'll see an ethernet port on one end and, and the other end's got a couple little SMA ports on it. And um, that interfaces to the, uh, to the back of a microwave dish as shown here. So uh, with that, I don't have a whole lot more, but there's probably a question or two and we can go back to a slide if we need to. Uh, again, I'm not, uh, somebody that really uh, uh, does this uh, frequently and uh, you know, I'll leave you with the phrase at the bottom of there too. All right, who has questions? Uh, Kevin, this is Mike. Um, I was wondering if you could just give us a quick uh, few seconds update on the whole three and a half gig band allocation or, or use, use, um, use by hams and uh, I, I'm thinking we expect to lose those frequencies soon, and I'm just wondering what our migration path uh, may be on that. Well, Mike, our migration path is to vacate the uh, 3.4 gigahertz. Uh, we've, uh, what we've read and what we've heard from the ARRL is that uh, uh, those frequencies have been auctioned uh, to the cell phone carriers. Uh, they've paid for them. They're likely to use them. Uh, don't plan on us using them much longer. And with that, that's why we got the grant to replace all of the 3.4 with 5.8 next year. Who else? Kevin, could you show the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, slide of the little uh, micro router that they had? Uh, I put a link in the in the chat. Oh, okay, that'll work also, thanks. And we're doing this this year, right? Not next year. I assume that's what you needed, Chuck? Uh, Chuck actually, is that the what one you before, after? I was looking for the one that they gave you. Oh, the uh, little Wi-Fi router. Yeah, that was the one I just wanted to look at to see what the model number was, thanks. Yeah, I think it was like 28 bucks or something like that. Uh, I mean, even the uh, the big ones that go into uh, go into our 19-inch uh, racks are only, uh, oh, they're less than 150 bucks. And it's, it's a router and a switch. I mean, you don't need two separate pieces. Yeah, the Microtik's got a lot of uh, interesting stuff. So, okay, great. I grabbed it. Thanks. Anyone else?
Mm. Thanks, Kevin. Nice job. Uh, do we go back to Clark? Okay, uh, next thing on the agenda is uh, other and new business. And I'm not aware that we have any other or new business uh, that has come up in the last month. Uh, so I'm opening the floor to any suggestions. There was one suggestion Bob Lunty came up with, and that's a um, Tuesday morning Zoom breakfast. And do we want to um, start that again? Bob, you had some comments. Bob Lunty, go ahead. You had some comments. Yeah, I did. Um, I just in general, you can see uh, we had several people show up uh, today for this meeting. And uh, those who didn't make it, uh, a couple of people had said they would make it and they'd be watching uh, Eric's version of this. So uh, at any rate, uh, I thought seeing we, uh, it, it was successful in the past when we uh, um, started having uh, the COVID impact on our meetings again. Looks like uh, at some point in time, we'll be able to resume it. I probably in the fairly near future seeing we only do monthly meetings. Um, but at any rate, uh, I thought Tuesday mornings, eight o'clock, we could do Zoom for anybody who'd like to do it. And uh, I know Jerry and uh, Phil uh, met for breakfast and uh, people are, who would like to do that can still do that. Uh, just it's not under the club auspices. So anyway, uh, the next thing I thought would be eight o'clock Tuesday mornings to do that. and. Uh, uh, on a weekly basis, we can judge what the rules and regs and suggestions are from the greater world about COVID. Uh, certainly not straightforward and uh, understandable by anybody uh, that I'm aware of as to what's safe and not safe and maybe safe and all those kinds of issues. But they, they do seem to come out with reports on it. People then have to judge their understanding of, of what the various risks are, I guess. So at any rate, my my I, I thought it'd be good for just to set that up. We can just meet at eight o'clock in the morning, put it out, uh, get people put out an email and start doing that again. Uh, any comments from anybody? Bob, this is Jess. I'll go ahead. And set I'll go ahead and set that up and schedule the Zoom meetings um, and we can just let it run and it'll be there. So um, if we want to make that announcement, we certainly can, but I'll go ahead and set it up. Sounds good to me. What do you think, Clark? Hang on, I gotta get back to my microphone. Uh, it's good to me. I, it sounds uh, like the appropriate thing to do right now. Yeah, there's an opportunity for other members that are pretty widely dispersed that people do check in when they travel and stuff. So I, you know, that's that's a, it's a nice feature, I think. Okay, I'll go ahead and schedule it and ask um, Pete to put it in the next blog. And Bob, if um, Bob Lutty, if you make an announcement on uh, tomorrow night's um, uh, net. I think we're, we'll, we'll away we go. So, okay, consider it done. Sounds good to me. I'll do that. Okay, does that uh, complete our uh, new business? Hey, <clears throat> Clark, I've got a question yes. for Bob. I know Bob. Have you been going, you've been going up to Snowmass. Kevin gave me the sheet that we stick on the repeater up there with the names and stuff on it. I don't know when I'm going to get up there. 
Would you like to take that up there one of these days and stick it on the door of the of the um, <clears throat> repeater cabinet there in the closet? Yeah, I'll work that out with you. Yeah, no problem, Jerry. I don't have any any plans this next week to go up, but I'll get it from you and and. Do well, that you'll again. probably be up there before I am. Put it that way. Yeah. Okay. We'll work um, it out. This, okay. This thanks. Is, uh, this is Mike. Um, Bob, if you could uh, let me know when you plan to do that. Um, I'm at Snow Mass fairly often. I was there yesterday last. Skiing's great, by the way. Um, but uh, if I can tag along, maybe I can find out where that is. And so in the future, I might be able to help with access up there. Yeah, quick, quick, quick act is that it's up by Up for Pizza. It's in the ski patrol headquarters underneath there. And I'd be glad to show you where that is. And okay. uh, we can take a few turns together. Yeah, there we go. And give them a shirt. Yeah, and give you your slow speed shirt. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna mail it to you, but it costs 11 bucks. So I, I don't think it's worth that. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll uh, it's cheaper for me to drive up and get it than that, so. <laughs> Bob, um, um, I don't want to usurp the meeting here, but um, Clark, maybe uh, I know um, Bob Cutter is in there. Maybe we could ask him just to give us a quick update on the slow speed uh, CW group, if you will. Uh, there's been, I think, a little bit of confusion. We've jumped around frequencies and that, and maybe you could just let us know where we are now or what the plan is for Tuesday. Okay, well, I'd, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, it looks like uh, that the, the best program is to use 80 meters and 60 meters. So uh, what, uh, what I've been uh, doing is starting out on 80 meters for about five or 10 minutes to see who shows up and then going over. And uh, so far, Fred has been uh, pretty consistent on there and uh, uh, the other mic, uh, K0YO down in, in Grand Junction on there. So uh, it, uh, it's still a very informal thing, but that's kind of the, uh, procedure, or the procedure that I've been following. How about time and frequencies? Well, eight o'clock and the, uh, the frequency is what we've, uh, what we've used before. Let me double check so I, uh, the 60 meter frequency is uh, 5332, 5332, and the uh, frequency is 3557, 3557, and eight o'clock uh, local on Tuesday nights. Sounds good. Okay. And while, I, while I've got the floor, let me brag just a little bit more. Yeah, I made another contact, uh, soda contact, while we were talking. This one was with WG0AT, WG0AT, WGOAT. You may have remembered this guy. He's got several videos because he used some of his gear to the soda peaks. And uh, he put a GoPro on the forehead of one of his goats. And it's... Uh, to follow that film is really amazing because if you're familiar with goats at all, they, uh, they've they got to go to the edge of any look down. So uh, have, a, uh, have a place where you could grab a hold of it, you see it. Just, uh, just go to YouTube and look for goat camera or uh, uh, WG0AT. He was on a peak called uh, Blue Mountain just outside of uh, Denver. And I talked to him, uh, made a couple on 40 meter CW. So anyway, that's uh, that's my report. Um, wow. Um, I have a, a, a comment. Um, Ken uh, KB0HP, um, would you be ready to talk a little bit about your presentation next week, or I'm sorry, next month on digital radio? I hope I didn't put you on the spot, but um, I have you down next. Can you give a preview or do you want to do it later? 
Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I hope you can hear me here. Uh, yeah, I, 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 um, I plan to do a presentation on uh, software defined radio. Is that that was the topic I, I think you were aiming for? Is that right, Jess? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Um, we left it kind of wide open. So yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Anyway, that's what I'm going to be talking about. And, and not so much from the theoretical and, uh, you know, all of the, uh, you know, the in-depth stuff, but just more how I use it and uh, the different types of SDR radios and the type of software you use and, and uh, the kind of fun you can have uh, with this type of radio. And it's, it's really open uh, literally my eyes on, on radio because my whole life since I was a little kid, radio was something you did with your ears. And uh, now I'm adding sight to my radio listening. And uh, so I can see, see the radio signals and, and their different waveforms on the entire spectrum of, of radio. And, and it's added a lot to my ham radio experience. So that's what we'll be talking about and trying to do some, uh, some sharing there on the screen just so you can see the different uh, software programs and the different types of radios and so on. So anyway, should be, should be fun. That's, what, that's my goal. Hey, Ken, we're looking forward to it. That is, that'll be nice. It, you know, it's like Bob Lutte said earlier, we don't know what this thing with Omicron is going to be. So um, we kind of have to be ready to do a Zoom presentation if needed, um, kind of put it in the back pocket and see if we can meet in person or what it is. So um, Brian did a good job preparing for it. So if I can help or anybody else, please don't hesitate to call. So we'll look forward to it. Thanks, Ken. I hope I didn't put you on the spot, but thanks. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Right. Thank, Thank you, Jess. Clark. You're welcome. Clark, back to you. Okay, I uh, had a comment uh, for Bob. Uh, my 80 meter uh, dipole is still not functional and I don't have a 60 meter. Gosh, that's bigger than a uh, 80 meter. So, no. Yeah. Or do you have any sort of, do you have any sort of tuner or anything? Or, like that? But at any rate, um, uh, no, as a matter of fact, uh, whatever it is, I'd have to install it in the snow, I think, is the problem on that one. So I, I have yet to get up and fix my 80 meter. I, I had a PL259 and unsoldered, and I haven't been able to get up there and, and uh, fix it. I had it temporarily fixed two weeks ago, I think. And the last couple of times uh, when I tried to tune up, uh, I had like an infinite BSW just a no-go. Okay, well, I what, can't do that on the side screen. What, what I'll do is I'll monitor uh, 8 8 uh, through my all star link uh, during the uh, the net. And if you're if you're on and are inclined, Clark, give me a call and we'll go to 40 meters and give that a try. Okay, great. I, I would appreciate that. That would be great, Bob. Yeah, and I really. I appreciate Mike and uh, and uh, Fred and the others who uh, pick up the ball and run with it when I can't hear anything here. That's the purpose of this thing, just kind of a like a watering hole where we can uh, uh, fear, be relatively certain that uh, somebody's going to be on there that we know at that time and frequencies and uh, just just you know just for fun. That's the reason for it. So uh, it's been fun so far and really eye opening as far as. Uh, I'm concerned because I have not made that many 60 meter contacts. And uh, it's a band that uh, I think is gonna be used more and more. It is being used more and more. And uh, so it, it's just, some, just something to experiment with and try. 